Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. So today I want to talk about this little gadget. And up front, this is the Kaiweets KTI 200 Thermal Imaging Camera. This was sent to the channel by Kaiweets. I'm going to do a review on this and share it with you, but Kaiweets does not get to see the video before I publish it nor will they have any input into what I say about the device. This is a typical handheld thermal imaging camera. This is similar to what we actually used in the fire department. Many of you know I was in the fire department for a long time. This, of course, uh, is considerably cheaper than the ones we bought. In any case, that's what this is. This is the box that it comes in, and it gives you basic specs here on the back. So here are the basic specs that are listed on the back of the package. Some of these I am not nearly smart enough to understand exactly what they mean, but some of them I do. This is our frame rate. 29 hertz is the frame rate. This is not a high-speed motion picture camera. This is a thermal imaging camera. This has uh, in it a resolution of 240 by 240 pixels, and it has a temperature range it can detect between minus 20 centigrade and 550 centigrade, and I'll put that in... American numbers here in the dingus below just to show you that because I can't do that conversion in my head. So with that being said, let's pop it out of the box and take a look at it. Okay, the device comes in this carrying case to protect it and an easy way to store it so you can keep all the bits together. Let's see what this looks like inside. Full disclosure, I've already had this open and played with it a little bit. And inside it comes with a user manual a USB A to C cable for charging the device and then the device itself. The device is handheld as you can see and is pretty straightforward in its operation. Uh, a interesting point with this device, it has a laser in it as well so you can use that to aim and that laser is lined up with where the sensor is aimed at so visually you can eyeball where you have it aimed at as opposed to just looking at the screen and hunting around. And that's a thing, believe me. So when we turn the camera on, and you turn it on by pressing that button, and it boots up, and it takes it a couple seconds to boot up. It's a not instant on. It will come up, and it will show us a picture. Now, I have some pictures saved, and we'll look at those too. But let's take a look at what the screen looks like. Let me move that case out of the way. Let's take a look at what that screen looks like. And I'm going to lay something on the, on the, uh, the bottom here. You can see my hand. And we can see, I'm going to hold on to this a second. You can see my hand holding on to it. It's kind of cool. You can see the blood vessels in my hand, the veins. That's the heat. And now if we look at this screwdriver, you can see where I was holding on to it. And that is the difference in heat. And these will tell you the ambient, the surface temperature of something based on the temperature differences. And where these things shine is that they show the differences in temperature. So, for example, my hand sticks out quite a lot here with the color I have. And you can see, there we go. You can see that my hand is much hotter than the surrounding mat that we're looking at. And what's cool about these things is if I remove my hand now, you can tell that my hand was there. So we have a lot of settings on this, and I'm going to walk through some of these. They're very interesting. But first, let's do this. So we have different colors that we can set up. And let me get something back out here that's warmer than the surrounding thing. I guess we use my hand. So we can change the color differences, the palette that the device uses. And this is really nice. There are a lot of palettes in here. So this one you can see that it's red is the cooler part of my fingertips. And then as we move up my hand, you can see it's warmer up there because there's more blood vessels, therefore more heat. So again, it's showing us the differences in temperature. And of course, as we change color palettes, different things register in different ways. There it is with red being hotter different background, more of a yellow-green for the hot spots, more of a blue-green-yellow for the hot spots, a different variation of red. There's black and white where white is hot. 
So let me hold that again. You can see, of course, my hand. So that's white hot. This is kind of a multicolored one. This is, and they have names for each of these palettes on the device. Here's green hot, red hot. And of course, if we sat here and watched it long enough, it would all slowly change back to the same color because the heat is going out of the screwdriver from where I held it. When you look at the device, you'll see that it has different markers on it. And I'm going to turn this on and hit the laser. And the laser is not going to show up on camera. There it is. Of course, then my hand is not on camera. So there's our aiming laser and we can get our ambient temperature where the laser is at and it's saying that the center is 81 degrees and the high spot has been up to 87 and the low temperature is 72 and if we move here you can see that it's determining that the background is more like 71 the high spot is currently 77 ish and dropping and then of course as this cools this will all end up being the same thing now you'll notice over here on the side we have a temperature graph this is showing us our current low temperature and our current high temperature based on what the camera is seeing right now. So here I have a little uh, butane handheld torch. Let me light this bad boy up. And so you can see that we're a lot hotter along the frame. And you'll notice, hopefully I just didn't melt my mat. You'll notice over here that our scale changes. And this changes dynamically as we look at something. So once again, let me light this up. And you can see on the right side of the meter, our top and bottom scale has changed a little bit. We're up to 315 degrees as a high and 72.9 as a low, which is the background. But you can see how clearly the gas flame stands out. And again, as we change color palettes, it gives us different views. Okay, let's take a quick look at the manual here for the KTI 200. This is the Kiwitz user manual for this, and this is in multiple languages uh, with pictures and everything. So the manual is pretty comprehensive, even though it's small. I do have to congratulate Kiwitz for making a manual that's big enough for me to actually read. Safety tips, where to use it, where not to use it, temperature ranges, how to clean it, maintain it, charging the battery. Here's the stats for the performance of this device and some of the specs. So this is interesting. The thermal image resolution is 240 by 240. The screen is actually a little bigger than that, and I think that's on the next page. This also gives the sensor type and some of the other information about this. There's the uh, temperature range that it's capable of measuring, minus 20 centigrade to 550 centigrade. And I put that in uh, the video earlier when I mentioned this. What the little things on the screen show us. So center point temperature, high and low temperature tracking are different palettes that we looked at, the display screen. And here's the display resolution is actually 320 by 240. Of course it has auto power off the image format. It is a built-in memory card on this and stores approximately 30,000 files and the weight and the dimensions. And here's pictures of the buttons and the various features on the device. And again, a, a color picture of all the information on the screen and what that's telling us. And then it goes through basic operations of the device and the different levels and so on. And we're gonna skip looking at the book and we'll actually jump in the menu system here. That is so cool. Of course, I'm getting a lot of overhead glare. Someone's handprint was there. So if we go in the menu with a quick press, this also selects items. So a, a short press of this will go and select an item. So we can jump in the album. I don't have any pictures saved at this point. Up and down does exactly what you, uh, what you want. Something worth exploring will be emissivity. So you can adjust that here. And I think that's why the chart was in the book about what those, those different items, what their emissivity is, which I assume is something to do with how much heat they will hold or their radiation level. Uh, the distance, 
you can play with the color settings here and change all the different color settings which is fine display settings and you can turn on or off these particular data points so I've got them all I've got them all turned on of course that goes back we can set alarms and this is cool because I can set an alarm that if the threshold of what I'm measuring is greater than 131 degrees Fahrenheit it's going to alarm uh, when it, it'll start warning me when it hits 113 and of course I've got this set for Fahrenheit since I'm we can set our different levels of our temperature ranges so since the device has such a wide temperature range you want to dial in its sensitivity and this is similar to a camera ISO setting so from minus 4 to 302 Fahrenheit is one temperature range and from 212 up to 1022 Fahrenheit is a separate temp range, temp range and then you can just have it auto switch and I have it on auto switch so as it changes and detects different temperatures it will change its ranging feature and then we jump into more settings there's our units what language we can look at all the languages set our date and time we can have our laser on and off we can have an auto power off on the device which is probably a useful function and I assume if you don't mess with it for that amount of time it will turn itself off we can jump in here and see serial number and storage available and so on and so forth and format our storage and reset it to factory and then this would be for a firmware update that I assume you would load via the USB-C connector on top so the device is very well made and you can see here on the front there's our laser um, up here as well as the sensor for the device it's got an excellent grip to it and it doesn't weigh very much this is drop safe to 1.5 meters it also has some level of water protection as well I would not call it submerge proof because this little hatch is not exactly sealed this just would keep random moisture out of it this can be charged and recharged and you can read data off of it via the USB-C connector another interesting feature on this which is a simple thing but interesting is this has a standard quarter 20 tripod mount in it so you can actually mount this on a tripod I mentioned that it has the laser on it I don't know how well this will show up let's try it on this black case there it is so uh, about a half press of the trigger button gives us the aiming laser and then a full press grabs a photo of whatever we're aiming the laser at now I've taken some pictures with this so let's jump through those real quick and you can see it created a album and then here are our pictures and I just aimed at several random things here in the uh, out here in the shop let's see that's not what I want there we go so this is uh, that's a window air conditioner unit that's here and the laser was aimed at at the vents and you can see that they're uh, much colder than everything else 45 degrees and you can see our temperature range over here 45 degrees up to about 80 almost that is my hand again with a different temperature range so that is a pen light as a matter of fact it's this light right here standing on the mat and what's interesting about this picture the light was turned on there's my hand again I don't have the picture I'm looking for that's the uh, fluorescent light that is one of the LED studio lights well I thought I got a picture of it I must not there it is uh, they must not be in order that is where the flashlight was standing for about 10 seconds just literally turned on and standing there and it picked up the residual heat difference there so that is the KTI 200 this seems like a pretty good value this is around two hundred dollars and I believe there's a coupon available on Amazon that knocks off another percentage of it I also have an affiliate link for this device in the description below again this was sent to me by the people at Kai Wheats. the uh, if you purchase it via the affiliate link it doesn't cost you any extra and it will help out the channel 
There may also be some other links directly from Kai Wheats with various discounts on those as well and codes. Guys, that is all I've got in this video. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. All that stuff's in the dingus right below. It will help feed the YouTube beast algorithm. Appreciate it, y'all. 73.